It tells us that Jethro must invest relationship-specific human and physical capital to facilitate a purchase of critters from Ellie Mae. The gross post-investment value is given by V equals 6J minus 0.03J squared, and J is the amount invested by Jethro. So the original deal is Jethro is going to throw down the, the investment, and Ellie Mae is going to pay him back her share. And it says that bargaining power between the two is such that any result, uh, any result of negotiation or renegotiation will result in Jethro receiving one-third and Ellie Mae receiving two-thirds. So the original agreement would be that Ellie Mae gets two-thirds of the value, but she also pays Jethro back for two-thirds of the cost. The, qu the question says, how much should Jethro invest if he anticipates Ellie Mae will renegotiate the terms of any prior agreement uh, they have reached once the investment is sunk? So they're, they're asking, how much should Jethro invest if he anticipates that they're going to have the holdup problem? Well, with holdup, we know that Jethro, now this is why this problem is a good one to go over. It's a little different than usual. usual Usually, they're splitting the value by two, just evenly. This time, Jethro is only going to get a third of the value. So we want to divide the value by three while keeping his investment not divided at all because we do have the holdup problem. From here, we can simplify it and take the derivative with respect to j to solve for j, in this case, to be 50. The next question says, suppose Jethro hires Miss Jane to monitor the initial agreement and Jethro's resulting investment. The initial agreement again called for Ellie Mae to receive two-thirds of the value, but also to reimburse Jethro for two-thirds of the, his investment. It says there's a 50% probability that Miss Jane, as a witness, will be able to hold Ellie Mae to the initial agreement. And it says if he can't, he will only receive one-third of the value with no compensation for his investment. This question says, now how much should Jethro invest to maximize his expected profit? So this is kind of like questions we've seen in the past where we've had an auditor, the auditor helped the person that, um, was th that hired the auditor invest more because they had more confidence that they'd get reimbursed. So this is the same idea here. We're gonna see that Jethro is gonna invest more than $50 because he's gonna have more confidence that Ellie Mae is gonna pay him back at the end of the day. So we know there's a 50% chance that they're still gonna have the holdup problem, and there's a 50% chance that we're gonna have no holdup problem, so the whole thing will be divided by three. We can simplify this down and solve for j. So we need to take the derivative with respect to j. We do that, and in this case, we see that with Miss Jane as a witness, Jethro, Jethro is going to invest 66.67. So the last question says, Jethro and Ellie Mae could merge to form a firm, hiring a tough CEO with a reputation for honesty and appropriately settling disputes. It says, if the CEO enables them to achieve the efficient investment level and the best possible contracting solution leads to an investment of $70, what is the most Jethro and Ellie Mae should be willing to pay for the CEO? Well, first let's talk about what is the efficient investment level. Well, that would be the level where we maximize total surplus. So we can just look at what total surplus is for the team, take the derivative with respect to J, and solve for the level of investment, which is 83.33. Now we need to, we need to plug 83.33 back into total surplus to see how much that's actually worth for the team. We do that and we get 208.33. It says the best contracting solution resulted in an investment of $70. Well, what's total surplus when we invest $70? We just plug in 70 and we see that it's 203. So with the CEO, we're going to invest 208.33 with the best contracting solution would lead to an invest, or, or no, I'm sorry, we're not going to invest 208.33. Our total surplus will be 208.33. The best contracting solution, our total surplus will be 203. So the value of the CEO in this case, or the most that they'd be willing to pay to hire the CEO is the difference between those two numbers or 5.33.